This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. We are talking perfumes today. Tis April 2022. And it is time to reveal the top five perfumes for the month of April. Whoop, whoop. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob All Spelled Together. It helps the channel out. And um, thank you to all my patrons who have already pledged. This video is filmed on my main Super Decoup channel. I live stream every Saturday. You can all join me. Everybody's welcome to join in the live chats. And in fact, I got my wonderful co-chators. Hello, everybody. Thank you for all the lovely emojis. <clears throat> Here goes. Now, while you're watching me live, you can also share with me your top five thus far this month. Or if you want to try guessing along as I reveal my top five, what they could be, it's always a fun game. And you let me guys, uh, guys, and guys, and ladies and gents, let me know in the comment section down below your favorites for the month of April 2022 as well. So listen to this. I am feeling a certain type of way <clears throat> this month. Oh, and by the way, on Patreon, you also get to see behind the top five perfumes for the month of April. April 2022. Tier 2 patrons and Tier 2 members on my main YouTube channel get access to, a, to an extra video dedicated to these fragrances as well. So, now, mm. would you believe Coochie, <laughs> Memoir d'une odeur, right? Coochie. We got a little Coochie moment here. That chamomile, I hated this thing when it first came out hated it still bought it because it was the first release now it's like almost half a bottle empty already now i'm kind of living for it Coty, you know Coty is Coty. they do what they do but sometimes they do something that fascinates me uh, to a point of um, i kind of go and i revisit it i revisit it over and over and over again, and then Gucci kind of delivered on Memoir d'un Odeur. Uh, this chamomile here is a great, great, great smell in, in the morning. Strangely enough, I also like to... So when I wear it, it doesn't last long on the skin. It's not something that you spray on in the morning and then it runs its course throughout the whole day. It's gone after an hour. But on paper, it really captures. It smells for days. It's so bizarre. On clothes, four to five hours, but I really like to smell this one out of the bottle. So it's an odd one. I kind of throughout the day would sniff on it. I would have it next to me and I would just kind of sniff on it and it gives me it gives me a vibe. It gives me a mood. And I do enjoy it. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, so I want to say under the Alessandro Michele uh, artistic direction of Gucci, uh, there have thus far since he became the artistic director, there have only been two Gucci products that I purchased. One would be a pair of sunglasses a couple of years ago. And the second thing would be this perfume. And that's it. That's all that he made for Gucci that I consider haveable, <laughs> that I want to have. It would be that one pair of sunglasses, which I also posted these unboxing on my channel, on my main Super Jacob channel many, many, many years ago when they were released. And then this perfume. So, as you can see, I'm not a big fan of Alessandro Michele, but whatever, to each their own. But I appreciate the fact that this fragrance was made under his, under his I want to say dictatorship. I, just, I don't want to, I mean, it, I, it's kind of, I always want to say dictatorship, but obviously you can't, right? <clears throat> under his um, directorship. <laughs> um, but this perfume really smells of his era at Gucci. Like this is the perfume that smells of the Alessandro Michele Gucci era. So it is evocative of something very particular, the escapism, the running away to the fields. It's very Decameron by Boccaccio. It's very like, hey, we're going to leave the world behind us and we're going to just go to another place and live in our idyllic isolated villa in the middle of the countryside outside of Rome. And we're going to live out our 70s druggy fantasy. Um, this kind of 
you know, when the rich, okay, the hippie movement was for the poor, working class and under. But once the hippie movement became fashion and the rich started dressing that way, well, then, you know, it's not hippie anymore. And th that's kind of Alessandro Michele for Gucci is like when the rich started to like, like the style of, of, of hippie, of hippies. And so the rich want to dress like hippies, but like the whole hippie movement was in part also <laughs> to block the rich from having everything and, and stealing from everybody else, everything else. I mean, not just that, but part of the hippie movement was also that. And yet you have this tendency of, oh, well, you know, the people with a lot of money are, are dressing up like, you know, it's, it's a cosplay. Gucci to me is cosplay. It's like dressing up to act like a, a rich person dressing up like a hippie. And I don't like that. It just it doesn't resonate with me at all. You know, if you want to belong to a hippie movement and there are still hippies out there, true ones at heart, you don't buy stuff at Gucci. Sorry, it just ain't it. But this kind of smells of all of that weird fakery and wanting to belong to something that isn't yours. Um, because you you can, you know, you're you're rich, so you 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 dress up like a hippie. I mean, pff, anyway. But the smell is fascinating. It has its ugly subtones. It can go bitter as well, but I love it. Second perfume, kind of three p.m. is the time between 3 and 5 p.m. Not later, not sooner. Don't ask why. Something about it, it's, it's, the day is ripe. It's just ripe enough in this moment, and that was for La Pausa, between 3 and 5 p.m. This is the Eau de Parfum version. The Eau de Toilette would be 28 La Pausa, but La Pausa is my number two. At 3 to 5, Mm. Oh my gosh, I love this one. So we got, <clears throat> and and mine, look, it's turning more and more yellow. It was more transparent in the past, but it's getting darker with time. It is a delicious fragrance. This orris root and iris in here are, ah, uh, I, I really, I don't really have words <laughs> I've reviewed it, so I do have words, but it's a wonderful, wonderful perfume. Very underrated. It's fresh, but dry. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful in spring. It's a very sophisticated, cold-hearted, high-class perfume. Like, this thing is on another level. Um, beautiful. Olivier Polge did this one justice. I mean, this is a, basically a different perfume from 28 La Pausa at least to me. It has a different structure, but it, it's wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it to bits. Highly recommend it. It has a cool, cold-hearted heart, but it knows what it's doing, so it's not an idiot. It's not a mean perfume. No, it's a wonderfully loving perfume, but it's strict, and I'm all there for it. Now, the opposite of that, still loving, but the opposite of strict. The opposite of strict and one of my favorite perfumes to wear in April, and I say this a lot, and I've said this in many, many videos, uh, April is the, I don't ask me why, at some point in my life, I probably experienced something while wearing this perfume in April that made, made it just stick to me as the April perfume. And that would be Incense Jassalmer Series 3 from Comme des Garçons. This thing is just divine. This is April, you got to me this is April. This this is hope, this is love, this is butterflies in the stomach, this is kind of like youth. It, you know, nature is, is booming, it's blossoming, chlorophyll it's at its peak, and this thing I smell this and I am transported in in, in that dreamy state of youth that once was brings me almost to tears in a good way in a good way uh it's it's that beautiful and i think you have to have a relationship to this one a connection it has to be anchored to a specific memory 
or era in your life in order to really love this one. Otherwise, you might not see what I see in here. Or you might not smell out what I smell out in here. And Julia says, yes, I was raised by a hippie dad. You are so right, Jacob. Right? If you know, you know, right? Oh. But I see the Newman asks, which perfume is strict? La Pausa. It's a very somber and austere. Perhaps you want to say more austere rather than strict. La Pausa is, in ver is a very austere fragrance. More so than strict, but also strict. But this thing, you guys... Uh, Jesus says, is this a deja vu? Did you talk about just so many previous top five? No, I did not, Jesus. I talked about it in my top 10 for spring. Yeah, so it is a little bit of a deja vu. But, and I said, I talk about this a lot in my videos. It's it's just, <clears throat> I don't know what, what this thing is. It also emotionally connects, the way it smells, it connects summer that is coming after spring with the memory of winter, which has passed, and it kind of brings it together in in spring. And it's such a wonderful, it's a crossroads of, of emotions and feelings and warmth and cold and heat. Man, it's just uh, such a beautiful memory jewel of emotions. And it's, it's beautiful. And I know... As long as I have Jasalme, every time I smell it, I will be taken back to my youth and to that feeling, you know, like when you're very young and you feel like you can do anything, like the world is your oyster. There's something in your spirit that is so free and full of hope untainted like you still you're you're naive enough like you're intelligent but you're a na you're naive enough still to think that really you can achieve anything physically emotionally spiritually economically you're just like a butterfly flying around everywhere and, and that's exactly the smell of this thing it, it and it brings me back to that thought to those emotions to that state of mind and it just makes me feel so good and so happy but the magic works only in april for this one wonderful the next one <clears throat> is my re-found love of poison the eau de toilette now this is the vintage OG. This batch is from 1987. So it is literally, this batch was made two years after Poison was released. Poison was released in 1985. I have been in the past past a big fan of the Esprit de Parfum. Now I'm not so much anymore. It doesn't do it for me in the dry down. Something turns. Well, my chemistry changed too. But the Eau de Toilette gained traction now i'm again upset it's been years that i haven't been using poison but now it's back like i don't want to say number one but almost number one in my rotation oh my god <laughs> the 80s you guys this thing oh. it's a miracle of a fragrance seriously i mean the velvety resins. Resins are usually sticky. This thing is velvety, so it's not sticky. It's resinous, but not sticky. It's resinous, but dry because it's velvety, but it's powdery. The tuberose sometimes turns dark and um, almost indolic. Other times it's very light, almost powdery, as if it was imbued in iris. The plum and the opoponax in there dance the whole time. Opoponax is kind of like an incense form. There's a hint of vanilla. And I guess my chemistry has changed. So now poison in the dry down turns sweet, like berry, sweet berries and powdery makeup and vanilla. Oh my God, the dry down. And then of course the tuberose of the OG formulation. It's, <clears throat> 
I, I really don't know how... how humanity invented such a perfume <laughs> and, and how we could live without it. I mean, Dior's current formulation of poison is okay. It, it also has that idea of poison running through its veins. But the current formulation of poison, I don't smell it anymore in my skin after two hours. This thing goes on for 10, 12 hours and it makes me happy. The dry down is good quality. It, it, it doesn't go, you know, stale and cheap in the dry down like a lot of perfumes, like a lot of Dior perfumes do nowadays. This thing is the bomb diggity. And I just praise the perfume lords for the fact that when Poison was released in the 80s, Dior really creative uh, created a massive buzz around it. They invested millions and millions and millions of, of dollars to promote it. The whole world was wearing poison. Everybody wanted poison. Everybody was buying poison. Not everybody could handle poison. But thanks to the fact that everybody was buying poison, poison, we have a ton of these left still today. And in fact, this bottle, I purchased it just this week, secondhand, and it had just arrived uh, yesterday. And it, it's 60% full. You can see it. It's, up, it's full up to here. Um, and, um, I'm so thrilled, you know, that it's kind of easy to find these vintage bottles and they don't cost too much and the juice is unaltered. It's not altered. It, it, you know, it's quite a synthetic juice, obviously. So there's not much that can go wrong with poison. You know, you buy it and, and no matter how old it is, uh, it still smells divine. This one smells just like a brand new batch. It's incredible. Um, and because they produced so much back in the day and people bought it blindly, but then not everybody could handle it. I'm sure a lot of people have it in their wardrobes somewhere in their drawers. And, you know, every, you get a lot of these secondhand out there and there's a, there's a lot, a lot of stock, which means this one doesn't cost too much to buy it secondhand, but it's still so delicious. And the other toilet is where it's at for me right now. I do have a big stock. I've been collecting these for decades. I have a big stock of the Esprit de Parfum, of the Eau de Cologne, of the Pure Perfume, of Poison, and of the Eau de Toilette. But right now, Eau de Toilette hits the spot for me all day, from morning to evening and night. This thing in April is just, I'm obsessed. And number five. Um, <sighs> this thing, this little baby here, 31 Rue Cambon, in its Eau de, uh, Eau de Toilette concentration. The Eau de Toilette is no longer in production. It's been discontinued. Now you can buy this in an Eau de Parfum concentration. But the Eau de Toilette is where it's at for me. This is the Haute Couture fragrance. This is the perfume of Haute Couture. This is a masterpiece. Of a, of a, of a, it's, it's a Chypre. It's, it's an Haute Couture type of Chypre. It's... um. So complicated. This one smells maybe simple when you first smell it, but when you start wearing it, it's so, so, so complicated. Yeah, the color just is, look at that. Look how beautifully golden it, almost red. It's almost, it, it has a red hue, doesn't it? This little baby here, now I have 31 Rue Cambon. I have several bottles of it. <laughs> I stocked up when they, when they announced that they're gonna, well, they never announced it. But when the news hit that they were going to announce, uh, that they were going to discontinue the Eau de Toilettes, I started stocking up. <sighs> it takes time to learn to love this one. Just like with Haute Couture, it's not easy. It's not easy to understand why is it so expensive? Why is it so complicated? Why are a lot of these clothes not even wearable on a daily basis why are they only for special occasions like it's a whole mentality that goes around it and the tailoring and this thing delivers just that now it delivers that in perfume form it is so well blended and tailored it it's incredible it's a masterpiece i think 
maybe, probably Sheldrake had something to do with this one, but it is Jacques Polge. Um, dare I say his masterpiece for Chanel? It's nothing groundbreaking, you know, uh, but it's class. It's a ton of class and savoir-faire. If you can really translate haute couture into a perfume, you have it. It's 31 Rue Cambon. Like there's, there's, there's nothing more to say. And so this need that I have in this time of my life of, of having perfection, like a mental state of perfection and calm and tranquility and just knowing that everything is blended perfectly is what brings me to, to want to wear this one so much right now in this time of year or in this particular month. And I often, and this is why it's the fifth one in the in the kind of uh, in this leveling, or if you want, in the continuation or the continuity of these perfumes. Why is this number five? Because I like to wear this one at night before I go to bed a lot. It's kind of like my cozy, sweet dreams. Everything will be perfect the next day when you wake up. It's like giving me hope that everything will be perfectly blended, that the day. The next day when I wake up, everything is going to be amazing. And this gives me um, that feeling of security. So going to bed with this thing is just very calming and soothing to me. And it, and it makes me feel sophisticated in a good way. Those are my top five perfumes for the month of April. Uh, be sure to tune in if you're a tier two patron or a tier two member to uh, my behind the top five perfumes for the month of April as well, coming out soon. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below your favorite top fives. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. Bye.